Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. It's Tuesday. I am the Crypto Crow. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the banking institutions and the problems they're in, uh, as well as Cardano. <clears throat> now, recently, Charles Hoskinson came out and was talking about um, the banking system, basically saying, you know, oh, gee, I wish we had a technology that would help replace these corrupt banking systems and, and all of the issues that are related to them. And, uh, and and some people are starting to buzz about it a little bit. Uh, before we dive into this more, uh, make sure you check out the murder of crows.io if you don't mind. Uh, you can mint up to 10 of these at a time, and uh, they're a little bit cheaper for the more you mint at a time. And uh, it's just a fun NFT project, supports me, supports my channel. Everybody loves these birds. Everybody has fun with them, promoting them, toting them around uh, Twitter. And I love to see it, quite frankly. So uh, check it out, murderofcrows.io. Now, we're going to dive into Charles Hoskinson's very brief tweet. If we only had a different way to run a banking system, if we only had a different kind of money, and as you can see, he's got this little uh, checklist of all of the banks that have basically just gone under. Some of the largest banks have now gone under. And the question is, why? Why have these banks uh, basically struggled so much? And why have these banks been going under? Well, one of the reasons for this, <clears throat> so it, either way you slice this, we have issues, right? Uh, on the banking side, the major issue is the 0% reserve requirement, which was enacted back in, it was 2020. Uh, I will show you this. This was uh, back, back in 2020. As announced on March 15th, 2020, the board reduced reserve requirement ratios to 0% effective March 26, 2020. This action eliminated reserve requirements for all depository institutions. And, and it's it's such a it's such a no-brainer because ultimately what that means is the banks don't have to keep any of your money in reserve they can loan out a hundred percent of it so if you go and you deposit a hundred dollars that bank can then turn around and loan out a hundred dollars uh, but the problem is is then the banks, they loan out $100, another banking institution will borrow that $100, loan it out again and again and again, and by the time all is said and done, your $100 has been loaned out 10 times to different financial institutions, which ties that capital up so that if you go back to the bank and you say, I want my $100 back, they say, well, we don't have it. We've got it loaned out, and they have it loaned out, and they have it loaned out, and they have it loaned out. So it's going to take some time to pull these funds back in, right? That's the problem. And so in the midst of economic crisis, well, that, 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 that's what happens. People get scared, and they start to freak out, and they start to worry about their funds being readily available when they need them. And they're not. And that's what's causing these bank runs. It's what's causing these banks to close up shop. So to me, this looks to be, I mean, the fact that this was an enacted in March 26, 2020, and it's just been basically, the, the reserve has been reduced time and time again. It's a very scary uh, situation that I believe is partly by design. <clears throat> I just don't think it's a coincidence. Um, so now the question is DeFi. What do we? What do we? The, pro, the 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 problem is is that in the midst of all of this, we have blockchains like Cardano. I'll read through some of this and then I'll 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 give you my opinion. So Cardano creator Charles Hoskinson recently took to Twitter to celebrate the fall of five major banks, implying that the traditional banking system could be replaced by decentralized finance and digital assets. No, I'm hearing buzzing outside. I think it's lawn stuff. Uh, in his tweet, Hoskinson said, if we only had a different way to run a banking system, if only we had a different kind of money, Hoskinson's statement is a clear reference to the DeFi ecosystem, which has been gaining significant traction over recent years. Decentralized exchanges or DEXs have evolved beyond mere platforms for swapping digital tokens. Today, they offer a wide range of financial services, such as liquidity provision, lending, borrowing, and depositing, all while maintaining a high level of decentralization. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> we have a couple of issues as it relates to DeFi. Number one, bad actors in the space creating and launching 
DeFi applications, DeFi protocols, whatever, um, so that they can rug pull on people. So there are some risks associated with that. And many people have been bitten by these DeFi applications. Not all are bad, but the the, the fact is, is that due to the gray areas, the, the, the nature of crypto regulation to date being so vague and so well we don't really want to tell you what's illegal or what's good or what's bad we just want to go after you if we want to and that's basically what it's been like if you've made a bunch of money in the crypto space well we're going to come let you know we want our cut and we're going to tell you you did something wrong even though there's no guidelines that says this is right or wrong this is security or not uh, we're just that's just how we want to operate for as long as we're going to be allowed to do that and i think the clamps are starting to come down on that and <clears throat> You know, Gary Gensler is basically, you know, he's on record in 2018 saying that, you know, three fourths of the crypto market are not securities. They're, in fact, just commodities. And then, you know, of course, he's all over the place and hearing after hearing now that he is, you know, the chairman of the, the SEC saying, oh, yeah, everything's a security. We're, we're responsible for regulating all of this. This is all our domain. And it's just like, you know, they want to increase the size of the barrel that all of the fish are in. And, you know, I... It, is it honest? I, I don't know. I mean, that's a, you know, there, there's so much to that. However, we do need regulation. I mean, you know, it, I think that the way Gary Gensler and, and the SEC and I, and I, the way they've been going about this stuff to me is all wrong. Um, <clears throat> but we definitely do need regulation. We need some watchdogs, some police dogs in the space monitoring, especially like these DeFi applications and other things. I, I think the whole thing between is this a security or not? I think to me, and to some degree in the techno or in the crypto space, I was going to say the technocratic space, <laughs> whoops. Uh, I, I, I just don't even think it's all that relevant. I mean, personally, um, I, I just, they're assets. Okay. You leave it at that. And it, they're, they're taxed as assets, they're assets. Um, but I, I do believe that we need regulation to monitor what's going on. And I do believe that there needs to be an easy way for DI, DeFi applications across the world to properly register without having to spend, you know, a million, two million, three million dollars or whatever for the luxury, if you will, which is often the case right now. There needs to be a very streamlined, simple process by which anybody creating a DeFi application DeFi application says, okay, we're building a DeFi application. We're building it for this blockchain. Here are its use cases. Here are what it does. Here are proposed growth metrics. This is, you know, here, it's almost like a company going public, but it's not. It's, we are an unknown asset or an unknown uh, entity here this is who we are this is our background this is what we do this is how our, our platform operates we're launching on this date we're offering xyz all of that and then just that be done a hundred dollar registration fee <clears throat> get the information in play stop making it so impossible for these DeFi applications or any crypto crypto business overall None of these companies should have to pay millions of dollars just to register and let the SEC know they exist. It's asinine. It is a barrier to entry that says only the big boys can play with us and we wanna make sure you have the capital to pay us our due. And I think those days need to be done. I just think overall it needs to be done. There are, there's enough going on in the space to where even if we were to change things, I mean, this is one of the, and you know what, maybe this is a crazy idea. I don't know. But instead of charging a lot of these applications a million dollars or $2 million up front, why don't the SEC say, okay, listen, you're going to pay a stipend of royalties or, or revenue generated, you know, 0.25% of all revenue generated is going to come to us to pay the bills. And you're going to say, oh my God, that's crazy. Why should anybody have to do that? Well, a, because it would make the registration process much more simple and allow everybody to do it the proper way. B, listen, when I was a fight promoter, I had to pay. I had to pay a percentage of all the ticket sales. I had to pay a percentage of everything. All the business that I did, I had to pay the athletic commission because I had to pay them to regulate me. Okay. And you know, it is what it is. If you, if I would, if the, and the bigger I got, the bigger I grew, the more the athletic commission made off of my events. 
That's just the way the cookie crumbles. You have to pay for regulation. Somebody has to pay for it. It may as well be the people that are benefiting from the, the regulation needing to exist in the first place. And this is the way you separate the good from the bad. This is why, you know, I might have my promote, my my MMA fight event, and I'm paying the commission. You know, I don't remember what it was, 5% or something, I don't know, off of ticket sales and what have you. And then I had hard costs associated with paying the judges, paying the, um, you know, the commissioners and uh, if they needed a hotel room or if they didn't or like whatever. There's all kinds of expenses associated with that. I had to pay that. And I believe that there's, there needs to be something in place so that it's not just about the SEC having to come down on, on, on different, you know, companies and say, well, we, we, you, you, you went against our vague guidelines and we just don't like it. So we're going to come after you for a check. I think it would be different if the SEC just made a, a, a regular stream of revenue that was basically paid on, on a regular basis from all of the applications, crypto companies, whatever, and just, just pay them a, a fraction of a percent. The SEC would have more money than they probably ever knew what to do with. And it's just, a, it's a way of business that many of us in business are used to seeing. I think that would be fine. And on top of that, I think that, you know, I mean, there are some, you know, an exchange. Exchanges have to pay someone to be on staff to monitor what they're doing. You know, like when I was trying to run those Bitcoin ATMs, I had to hire a compliance person to basically monitor everything in my systems at all times and flag anything bad and do all kinds of stuff. I didn't know how to do it, but I had to hire somebody to do that, you know, and, and it's just, I just think that's the way it, everybody should be doing business in the crypto space. And listen, I know that the SEC is the big bad dog right now because of the way they're doing things, but ultimately we do need them or we need somebody like them. They just need to change their approach to how they're generating revenue for themselves to maintain their body and to maintain their power to regulate. That's what I think. And I think that honestly, a, a stipend off of all of these registered applications, paying them at, you know, daily, weekly, whatever, it's all on the blockchain. You can automate all this stuff. There's no reason why it can't be the case. So those are my thoughts. But in terms of the banking institutions going under, listen, DeFi is coming. All of this stuff is gonna continue growing. One of the other hurdles right now in DeFi is ease of use and trust. A lot of DeFi is still very confusing to a lot of people. It's not ready for the mom and pop, the, you know, the, the 70, 80 year old who's used to just being able to walk into their bank and, you know, write a check and hand a check to somebody. It needs to get that easy for true widespread mass adoption. And I do believe we're going to get there at some point, uh, especially with our cell phones and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are two primary things that I think ultimately need to change in order for us to see true mass adoption in the DeFi space and ultimately the cryptocurrency space so those are my thoughts for tuesday i will let you go enjoy your week be productive have a good time and until next time guys crow your coins and i'll see you soon